Turkey. Hamas has returned 58 hostages to Israel in three exchanges over the weekend. A fourth prisoner swap is expected later today. 17-year-old Noam and his 17-year and his 13-year-old sister Alma were released on Saturday. They were kidnapped on October 7th when Hamas forces attacked their community, unfortunately killing their mother. Their older brother survived this attack. Their father is still thought to be held hostage in Gaza. Joining us now is Noam and Alma's uncle. His name is Ahal Besarai. Mr. Besarai, we thank you so much. We're so glad to talk to you this weekend. I can't imagine today, I can't imagine what this weekend was like for you. Tell us when you got the news, what you thought, what you felt, how your kids are doing today, your relatives are doing this morning. So we got the news uh, before, uh, before the release actually took place. Uh, they informed us that... Uh, uh, Noam, the boy is 17, and my niece, who is 13, were on the list. Uh, it was very difficult to uh, gather the uh, hopefulness that uh, is required because you are dealing with a vicious terrorist organization, and, and you, you, it was just the second exchange. You weren't sure if they are not playing games, and indeed they played some games. They delayed it by seven hours mm. uh, at the end of the day. Uh, the children crossed the border. Uh, they were met by uh, the grandmother and the older brother, who is 18, who was not on the kibbutz on the day, and uh, because of that was saved. Um, and unfortunately, the first news that they had to be confronted with was the murder of the mom on October yeah, 7th. I, I, yes, yes. I'm so sorry that she did not survive. You have talked to your, your relatives. What have they told you about the conditions while they were being the held? What was happening to them? It wasn't an easy um, activity conditions. Uh, I don't want to go in too much detail into what they shared with me, if that's okay. Yes. Uh, there are other parents who have children. Uh, in captivity, in uh, held by Hamas, uh, and what befell our uh, family or our children is not necessarily a representation of what other uh, hostages experience. Uh, but it wasn't a walk in the park, to say the least. They were held in a house together with another lady uh, in a room. Uh, very little food, very little water. They came back very, very slim. And there were other things that happened there while they were there, uh, which uh, at this point I would not want to expand upon. Uh, even when they decided to release them, uh, they did not tell the lady who was with them that they are going to be released. They in a way snuck them out uh, to, the, to the restroom. Uh, this was a ploy, and then handcuffed them and uh, blindfolded them and took them to the car that then took them uh, to where they are handed over to the uh, Red Cross. So this lady is left there after spending 50 days with them. Uh, and, you know, they supported each other. Uh, they even held a diary uh, to, in a way, help them cope. Uh, and as far as she's concerned, they might... Uh, had been taken to, to, to be killed. Um, mm. So, you know, a lot of psychological pressure, which, you know, as a human being, you just don't understand what is the purpose of all that and why, yeah. what, what cause uh, does it actually serve? It's interesting, Mr. Besserai, that you say that they were held in a house. The presumption by many and the description from other hostages is that, the, is that they've been in tunnels a house seems like an improvement in conditions, but as you say, you don't know if it's representative or not. I'm interested in this next chapter in your niece and nephew's life. They're back here in Israel. They've learned that their mother is no longer with us. And I presume they've also been told or heard of the destruction of Kibbutz Beri, their home. Um, are, is the plan, well, let me start with what, what comfort are they taking? What are they doing to try to Reacclimate to life in Israel, to their home, knowing they can't go back to their actual home because the kibbutz is one of the hardest hit places. Yes, indeed. Um, I think they are surrounded by family, people who love them, who care for them, 
who show them that they do. Uh, I think they found comfort, comfort in that. Uh, I think there are a lot of friends that they missed and interacting with them uh, might uh, help uh, overcome some of, uh, of the traumas. Uh, and I believe they have uh, inner strength that maybe all of us humans have uh, that they tapped into during this time. Uh, and also the passage of, passage of time would, yeah. would help. Yeah. Us. Not, we cannot go back to the kibbutz. Uh, it's destroyed. It's still a military zone because it's close to the border. Still a war is, uh, is uh, going on. Uh, but the idea is that they will come back, that they yeah. will bring the kibbutz. And out of this... Uh, you know, there will be some sort of a silver lining in, in this cloud. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, uh, Mr. Besser, I, we're praying for you, we're praying for your family, for the father who is still uh, believed to be in Hamas custody, and, and for the entire community there, the kibbutz. Uh, we, we hope for brighter days ahead. Thank you very much for sharing a little bit of, of your family's suffering and, and the hope for the future this morning. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you.